Welcome to the Real News Network in Baltimore. I'm Kim Brown. In advance of his address to Congress on Tuesday, February 28th, this is Donald Trump we're talking about, major national advocacy groups and individuals reacting to his anti-environmental pro-fossil fuel agenda are joining together to hold a resistance address defending American values in a time of moral crisis. That is the title of it. Thousands are expected to participate in the rally, both in front of the White House and live stream before Trump gives his address to a joint session of Congress. And with us to discuss Donald Trump's um, addressing Congress uh, sort of informally or rather not as a formal State of the Union and the D.C. rally, we are joined with Winona Howder. She is the author of Fracopoli, The Battle for Future of Energy and the Environment. She's also the founder and executive director of Food and Water Watch, which is the first national advocacy organization to call for a ban on fracking. Winona, thank you for joining us uh, again. Thank you for being here again on The Real News. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, so the event is on Tuesday with your organization, Food and Water Watch, as well as the ACLU, MoveOn.org, Civic Action, uh, Reverend Lennox Yearwood Jr.'s organization, the Hip Hop Caucus, uh, taking place before Donald Trump's first address to Congress. It's being called a resistance address, defending American values in a time of moral crisis. So talk about what you mean by American values. Well, what we mean by American values is what we believe that most Americans believe. They believe in acceptance and tolerance. And we believe that the discriminatory uh, policies that Donald Trump is going to lay out on Tuesday night really don't represent most Americans. They don't want to see people put in harm's way. They don't want to see our shared values undermined, equality undermined, and a dangerous agenda laid out for the environment. So we're very excited. This rally is really coming together at the last minute. We went down and uh, applied for permits several weeks ago, but we only found out on Wednesday, so less than a week before the rally that we would be permitted to be at Lafayette Park uh, across from the White House. And today, we also learned that our march has been permitted. We are going to be live streaming uh, this event, and that's the way that thousands will be able to participate, because it's going to be live streamed, and um, the many organizations involved are going to be able to Facebook Live the event. Winona, when your group initially applied for the permits to do the rally in Lafayette Park in the inevitable march, did you know that Donald Trump was planning to address Congress on this date? Well, yes, that's in fact why we applied for permits. And we first applied to get a permit at the Capitol and we're told that um, it wouldn't be possible, although we were able to keep a very small space um, that the Capitol Police considered for a permit that we are getting for the end of our rally. But we were told basically that uh, the only space available would be at Lafayette Park, and it is small, much smaller than we had um, initially hoped to get. Uh, but we are really, really feel that a lot of people are going to be able to participate in this uh, through the live stream. One of Trump's longtime adversaries, actress and comedian Rosie O'Donnell, will also be taking place in the rally. She's also been a longtime advocate for LGBTQ rights. So are we seeing a coming together of different social movement, for example, LGBTQ activists and immigrants' rights groups joining with environmentalists and indigenous activists on a scale that we have not seen before, united against the current administration's anti-progressive agenda? Yes, absolutely. And we also have our revolution, the National Nurses Union, and many, many others. I think that the only bright side of the Trump uh, election is the outpouring of support for organizations, volunteers who really want to go out and work against the Trump agenda. And really, for the first time that I have worked in Washington, and I've been here a long time, you can really see 
different groups who represent different constituencies and in fact different movements coming together and planning planning events like this uh planning the giant rallies that we're going to see in the coming months and also i think that for those of us who actually do electoral work you're going to see a real uh coalition come together to focus on the 2018 elections and um the elections down the road in fact um not only for Trump but after the redistricting takes place so that we can really start to change the politics of this country and of course we need to do something about these state legislatures who really determine um the districts for the members of the House of Representatives and i think that we have a house today that is actually not representative of most americans values so let's talk a little bit about the possible content of trump's speech to congress i mean donald trump is seeking what he calls a historic increase in the military spending of more than 9% which is a huge rise and will seek to boost pentagon spending in the next fiscal year by about 54 billion dollars in his first budget proposal i mean officials familiar with trump's proposal said that the defense increase would be uh financed by cuts to the state department and the epa and other non-defense program. So, is there a terrible irony here in that climate change is acknowledged by the Pentagon as one of the key drivers of national and international security, but we're seeing cuts to these uh to these agencies such as the EPA while military is getting a big boost. Yeah, it's really unbelievable and outrageous and we know that already more than 50 cents out of every tax dollar goes to the military and now Trump is calling for this huge military build up at the same time that he's decimating uh the environmental protection agency and uh I think that this is probably going to come back to bite him at the state level too because while he talks so rhetorically about regulations and the environment actually a lot of the EPA budget goes back to the states to run really necessary programs uh to protect residents so that they have safe drinking water so that they're not getting lung cancer from radon many many common sense programs so i think that once people realize what these massive budget cuts to EPA actually mean there's not going to be the kind of support that he's hoping for and you know at food and water watch we've often been critical of the environmental protection agency for not being strong enough especially in standing up to the fossil fuel industry but i think we all recognize that we need an environmental protection agency that it should be strong it should be well funded and um there is going to be an ongoing fight back against the war that Trump has declared on the environment and on EPA So the new fossil fuel friendly head of the EPA Scott Pruitt and Donald Trump are rumored to be poised to gut federal regulations to protect clean air from greenhouse gases and other chemical pollutants and to decimate clean water rules uh from industrial waste. So with the argument being that these regulations have negative impacts on business and the economy, but one factors uh, if one factors in the financial costs of the health impacts, does that argument break down in your opinion, Winona? Oh yes, absolutely. And in fact, what this is going to do is further decimate our public water systems. And I think that most Americans would agree that we should have safe tap water for everybody to use for bathing and for drinking. And the idea that we're not going to have rules around safe drinking water, uh it's just crazy. And in fact, the rules that uh that the uh Trump administration are destroying that have to do with preventing pollution for 
different waterways. Um, this is also going to impact drinking water. And ironically, Trump has been talking about infrastructure, including water infrastructure, but many of his actions, uh, the executive orders and the, the budget cuts are actually going to further hurt our infrastructure. And we know that what he really intends to do is make water infrastructure improvements and in fact all infrastructure improvements uh, a place for his cronies to make money uh, through privatization and uh, high-priced contracts. And one of the things that we have really noted is that if the money that Trump wants to spend on the wall, so we're talking about $25 billion, if that money could be spent on water infrastructure, like improving the lead uh, service pipes that go into up to 22 million Americans' homes, um, that could all be fixed for the same $25 billion, uh, including all of the lead pipes in Flint. So it's, it's really an outrage the way that he's going to waste public tax money and not address the real problems in this country. I mean, and just think about lead poisoning for children and the long-term impacts of that. Uh, that is a real irony, I think, in all of this. So talk a bit more about what the message that you would like to send to Donald Trump and Congress in terms of their agenda and the effect that it could have on the American people and what kind of policy uh, that we need to be investing in and safeguarding against at the same time in order to ensure a, a sustainable, healthy future. Well, you know, the reason that we have invited a broad base of constituencies from groups representing Muslims and Jews to uh, NAWIL that uh, represents uh, pro-choice women, uh, the National Nurses Union, Our Revolution, uh, many other groups, is that we have a shared progressive agenda. We want the kind of world that has uh, real acceptance and that offers equality. And we don't want to see what we believe are the values of most Americans be undermined by the Trump agenda, both by the hate speech and by budget cuts and all of the terrible things that he has been uh, promising to do and already uh, has been um, doing uh, regarding uh, immigrants, the environment, uh, this is really about putting out the narrative that we want to see going forward. And that's the narrative that we want to take way beyond this rally in March and into the future as we both resist, but we also protect and we rebuild and we rebuild our democracy. Winona, for those who can't be in Washington on Tuesday, February 28th, where can they live stream the rally and the subsequent march? Well, the best place to find information is at our website, foodandwaterwatch.org. Uh, at the top, there is already information, and we're going to have all of the live stream information there as well as we finalize our plans. Indeed. We, well, we've been speaking with Winona Howder. She is the founder and executive director of Food and Water Watch. On Tuesday, February 28th, Donald Trump will give his first joint address or first address to a joint session of Congress. At the same time, a resistance address defending American values in a time of moral crisis will be happening at Lafayette Park in Washington, D.C. You can stream it, as Winona just told you, at foodandwaterwatch.org. Winona, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for watching The Real News Network.